Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at something which came as part of a channel donation I'll put a link to the original video up the top there and this came from uh, from Adam Adam L and uh, I thought that this particular item was actually worth a video in its own right uh, it's a component tester it's also sometimes called a curve tracer and I've even seen references to an octopus as well as uh, as descriptions for this particular item I call it a curve tracer you can call it what you like um, but let's start by having a look at it on the bench one of the items that Adam very kindly sent me in one of his channel donation packages was uh, this device which uh, he calls a component tester which indeed it is um, sometimes it's called a curve tracer and when I spotted it I pretty much realized straight away because of the X and the Y BNC sockets it was likely to be a curve tracer which indeed it is and um, didn't want to make that video too long by seeing if we could get it working but uh, I think it's definitely worth looking at this and looking at how curve tracers work because they're quite a handy little circuit now they do work with digital scopes um, but I happen to think in, well in, certainly in my experience they've worked better with uh, with an analog scope but they certainly do work with a digital scope and I'll show you a screen grab from that um, uh, in a while so uh, ordinarily I've got the scope warmed up here this is the um, analog scope from the 1970s single channel I've got it warmed up and ordinarily the x-axis is controlled by the time base and if I slow the time base down you can see there is circuitry inside the scope which is causing the um, beam to cross from left to right and the period that it takes to cross from left to right the time base if you like uh, allows us to make measurements in the in the time domain and convert them very easily to frequency um, so the y-axis um, is all about the voltage that's been applied here currently I've got this set to DC coupling and if I take a, a power supply so here's a little DC power supply currently it's about 1.2 volts if I turn up that supply you can see as the voltage increases so the trace goes up now if I were to apply a negative voltage the reverse would happen and if you slow that down um, you can see the trace is moving up there as you'd expect now if I put the scope into XY mode like so first thing to note is that the beam stops and that's because we've now taken the time base oscillator inside the oscilloscope out of circuit and we're now going to control that externally so nothing has changed on the Y input so if I increase the voltage the spot will go up yeah and if I were to swap over these these connections to the power supply like so the spot would go down so we've got voltage control of the position of that spot in the vertical just using the y input so if i now transfer that to the x input and uh, i can do exactly the same if i turn the voltage up that i can move the trace about in actual fact the X position if I put it in the middle there that should move to the left and if I swap the leads around again we should be able to move it to the right which we can there so we've got voltage control of the position of the spot um, or, the, or the beam if you like and that's what the curve tracer uses to um, provide information about components so I'm just going to now connect up the curve tracer and then we can look at uh, what it does okay so I've now got the um, power supply to the curve tracer and I'm actually supplying it with about 117 volts through a, uh, a transformer which is actually isolated it from from the mains uh, it's quite a, a powerful output on this so 117 volts is plenty to um, to show you how it works and we will look at the circuit um, and try and get one working on the breadboard a little later on so what we've got here is um, this is the Y input which is going to go to the conventional scope input for the Y and the X input is going to go into the not surprisingly X input and so we get a line going across and what effectively this is doing it's in making that spot because remember that without this being switched on and if we just 
turn the power off for a moment we should just get a spot there you are it is the curved tracer the circuit that's currently moving the spot and actually it's moving it backwards and forwards because it's supplying um, uh, alternating voltage um, to these two probes here that are currently not connected to anything so voltage is plotted on the x-axis and because of the way the circuit um, is arranged and we'll look at that in a minute current is displayed on the y-axis um, and there's nothing in between the probes at the minute so there's no current now we'll it's beyond the scope of this video to look at the different um, shapes and to why they get produced but if I just take a, a capacitor this is um, a non-polarized one microfarad capacitor and it's important just to bear in mind if you use one of these that this is supplying an alternated volt an alternating voltage and obviously there are that means the polarity of those two probes is changing um, 50 times a second so if you put a polarized component on here say an electrolytic or a tantalum capacitor you are effectively applying um, the, the wrong um, polarity of voltage to it which isn't a great idea but capacitors um, are quite a good thing to show you because they have a very distinctive trace so I'm just going to connect this up and if you watch the oscilloscope trace carefully we get that distinctive circular pattern and what's happening here is still voltage across there and current up there that um, as the voltage rises and falls 50 times a second so the spot moves around and the um, effectively you're seeing the, the phase change here of a capacitor now the larger the value the bigger the um, if you like the diameter of the, the circle and there is a control on here to to control the voltage actually moves it right off the screen if I was supplying that with the full 240 volts the, even this wouldn't be displayed on the screen so it's handy that um, I'm able to just do that to um, show you the distinctive shape so we will have a look at a few distinctive shapes in a moment but um, one of the reasons I wanted to um, show you this particularly is because uh, this scope actually has a curve tracer built in and that's what those two connections are there so I'm just going to put the same capacitor onto the curve tracer here so I'll just get set up for that okay so I've got a conventional pair of banana plug leads plugged into the curve tracer setting um, that's the scope in its normal mode with the time base running if you press um, the switch the curve tracer on we just get the horizontal line as we did with the other one so I've just got two probes now there's there isn't really any adjustment on this curve tracer it's just one setting but if I just pop that one microfarad capacitor on you'll see we do get the distinctive um, circular pattern there and it's quite handy from a component identification point of view so if you get something like a, a diode we get that very distinctive um, corner there and actually although it's probably hard to see on here that is where the um, forward voltage uh, where the diode starts conducting there's a tiny little gap there and that little gap if I just short those you can see that um, and in fact I'll move it so it's exactly right the line is exactly in the middle if I put it on the diode there you can hopefully see there's a very it's very slightly to the left and that's the um, about the point 5.6 volt um, uh, forward voltage of forward um, junction voltage of a, of a silicon diode and it's probably even better illustrated with this diode here where we get that and if you're familiar with curve tracers in actual fact if I turn it around we'll get we should get the knee at the same point like so so there's your there's your forward voltage again um, where it's where the diode starts to conduct but then you've got this here the opposite way and that's the very distinctive curve of a Zener diode and the distance of that line is the um, voltage at which the Zener starts to conduct this is a 4.7 volt Zener but it's a very the Zener is a very distinctive shape so compare it to a conventional diode um, where you just get the the knee when it starts to conduct but with the Zener you still get the knee but you also get that second knee to the right where the um, the Zener is doing its thing that Zener diodes do right let's um let's have a look at the circuitry and see if we can see how this um this works 
Okay, um, having a look at the circuit board then, um, I think the circuit looks something like this. So we've got the AC power supply um, and step down transformer, uh, the 470 ohm resistor, and the LED and diode are essentially telling you it's switched on. And then we've got a, a voltage divider of three resistors and a um, three position switch, which allows you to set the three ranges. Uh, device under test. Um, uh, shown there as a box with DUT uh, and then the X and the Y are the two inputs to the scope with the ground connected um, to the center point. Now what actually goes on there is the a scope of course um, measures voltage not current and the top connection there is showing you the voltage uh, across the device under test and the bottom probe is showing you the voltage that uh, occurs across the 1k resistor and of course um, current is proportional to um, the voltage across the resistor so that effectively allows us to um, if we want of a better word sense the current um, so that that's how the thing works um, it is as I said remarkably simple now my scope manual has a, a very nice um, uh, set of diagrams showing you the various uh, shapes that are produced by the curve tracer so I thought it was worth producing this this is the Hamig HM 3073 manual and it shows you there um, the kind of things that um, a curve tracer will produce now the circuit of the curve tracer inside the scope is sort of buried in the um, the rest of the circuitry so it's probably just a bit confusing to look at that uh, but essentially this is a curve tracer um, it really is incredibly simple so um, the X is sensing the voltage across the device under test the 470 ohm resistor at the top there is just effectively current limiting and then the 1k resistor is used um, so that we can sense uh, the, the voltage across that resistor and that effectively gives us um, proportionally the current so it's as simple as that so let's just have a quick look at that circuit on the breadboard Okay, so arrangement I've got here now then, as per the circuit diagram you've just seen, uh, AC supply coming in on the left hand side here, just uh, taken from uh, uh, a transformer with a variac, so I can just alter the voltage to get something that works for me. Uh, I've got the two resistors there, that's the 470 and the 1K resistors, and these two white leads here represent, if you like, the, the two probes, and I've got the the scope attached via these clip leads. So we've got the standard curve tracer horizontal line there. If I short the probes out, we should get effectively maximum current. So we get the vertical line as you'd expect. And I've got the same one microfarad capacitor non-polarized that you saw earlier. So I'll now connect that. And surprise, surprise, you can see you get the very distinctive shape of the of the display. So there you go. Very easy to build. This isn't a a very sophisticated version on probably wants uh, if you're thinking of building something then you probably need to uh, go for something perhaps a little bit more sophisticated but it does nonetheless uh, demonstrate the principle okay well there you have um, the curve tracer that came as a donation and curve tracers more generally um, they're not a particularly common uh, device these days and I guess with the advent of uh, these little, little uh, component checkers and various other testing devices um, they've become less relevant I choose the word relevant because I don't think they're less useful I think they're actually a pretty clever bit of kit that can actually allow you to identify um, types of components in a in a relatively easy way and I do actually make use of the curve tracer on my oscilloscope quite often in fact it always has its leads plugged in and if I've got an item I'm not sure what it is it's usually pretty easy with the curve tracer to identify it and at least then um, uh, have a start for what kind of thing it is that you're dealing with so I hope you've um, enjoyed that um, if you have please click the thumbs up if you haven't please click the thumbs up anyway because it really helps me be great if you could subscribe that would also help and neither of those cost anything if you're in the market for a multimeter have a look in the description uh, there's some links there and a code get you a bit of discount and doing that will help the channel if you've already done that thanks very much and look forward to seeing you on the next video